So guys, hey, welcome everybody to the Espresso Mastery Session. A big treat. Um, we are now, you know, we say you're not in Kansas anymore. We are in Kansas today because <laughs> Shannon Steer's here. A 21-year vet. Um, you've probably been to one of her classes. She was at Bold. She's a certified Maxwell, John Maxwell uh, coach. Uh, she was a KW traveling over the United States doing her classes. So Shannon, uh, oh, also I want to mention that she was started her new career in 2016 from zero and now on track for 40 million, right? Shannon? Yeah. Isn't that exciting? So that's awesome. So um, talk to us about this whole change for you and um, leaving the world of training and coaching. And then all of a sudden you said, I'm going back in the field. Uh, you must have been a little bit um, nuts. I mean, just how, how did you handle that? Well, first of all, I think everybody will hit some speed bump in life where you have to step back to go forward. And you know a little bit about my story. My story was health and I couldn't continue to stay on the road teaching bold and putting myself in that box of coaching 45 clients a week. So I decided and planned to go back into business and I relaunched my team in 2016. So I was out of business for 10 years. Wow. 10 years. So, and I really feel like I had to prove to myself, Bill, that I had all this knowledge and I knew all this stuff, right? Especially after teaching 3,500 people in bold that I actually, I could actually do it. Yeah. You could not fail. <laughs> there's, no, no, no. there's no way you could fail. <laughs> not with social media. You really can't fail. Yeah. Yeah. I think I saw Shannon not going to that for sale honor yesterday. What's yeah, up with right. that? So, right. so then, so you, so what was your thing? What was your, what was in your mind? I mean, when you started going through all this stuff, you know, I'm sure you go through what everybody else is going through when they first started in your head. Well, I did have a little bit of an advantage and that was, I was already like 16 years in the business or 17 yeah. years in the business. And I had probably done more scripts than most anybody in the world. So practicing obviously is really important. The first thing I did was hired an admin because I knew that that was not my strength. I, I think knowing your behavior is really important here and knowing playing to your strengths and let somebody else have your weaknesses. So that's the first thing I did was I hired an admin. And then, and I told you this story last week when we were talking to a different group. And that is, if you have no business, you have no business doing anything else besides being on the phones. Tell them how many hours you were on the phone. Six. Six hours, guys, a day on the phone until you start leveling out. But I want to also tell you, say something, because I know you, and I know that when you said you hired someone, you hired someone because there's one place on the disc that you're not extremely, extremely high in, and you said, I got to get that person. So what was that? Oh, I hired a CS because I'm a DI. So if you're understanding the disc, I'm an extreme on the first two, I needed an extreme on the second two. And I actually, you know, gave her the power or I enrolled her, right? So that she would hold me accountable to stay on the phones. Because if I didn't get my leads and I didn't get through so many calls, I told her, it's okay for you to be mean to me. It's okay for you to do whatever, because I only have two feelings. You're not going to hurt either one. And I need you to keep me on the phones. Otherwise, I'm going to fail. And I really had no choice right? Like I have expensive kids. I was paying alimony. I had all kinds of, I was not willing to change my lifestyle. So right. I had no choice except to succeed at, at a really high level. How so, long did it take you of the six hours a day to start to see things happen? Well, I, I started with my sphere. So that was a little bit slower, right? Because I needed to warm up. And one mm -hmm. of the things that I didn't tell you last week, Bill, was I got three role play partners. And I role played 30 minutes, three times a week. I got somebody from Minneapolis, somebody from Florida and somebody from Austin. And each one of them helped me. One was FISBO, one was expired and one was more sphere. And so we role played 30 minutes every week, the whole first year that I started because I had to get warmed up to get on the phones. Right, right. And right. I think a lot of people miss that piece. They just go in stare at the phone and go, hello phone, who are we gonna call today? How important do you think that is? Because I know, I know you think it is, but I mean, when you really look at that element or that aspect of getting yourself going, how important was that? It was everything. Because I had already fallen down. I'd made all my mistakes before I got on the phone and I started calling. And I will tell you, had I not had those two role play partners, uh, 
Chris and Chris, actually, there's no way I would have been that successful in calling for sell by owners and expires. There's, there's just no way because I wouldn't have got on the phone. How did you do, you know, I don't think we talk about this enough is, so you, you were in 30 minutes. How did that go? How did you set that up to be effective in doing it? How did that work? So each week we would basically trade off and do two times two role plays each. So I would say, okay, I'm going to work on an expired and here's the objection I want you to give me because this is where I got stumped last week. And then they would say, here's where I got stumped last week. And then we would work through that. And then we literally learned so much from each other and they were really, I mean, all three of them did over 50 million. So I went out and chose three agents that did over 50 million that I knew they were killing it in that one thing. So it was a great place. And I actually had all three of them in bold. So I had a great relationship yeah. with them, which helped. Yeah. And yet me listening to them taught me more than me saying it out loud. You know, that must have been a little nerve wracking for you. Okay. First of all, you've trained, you, they were in your class and now you're role playing with them. You're going, mm -hmm. now you're the, the spotlight is on Shannon, a little bit different. Yeah. And, and uh, so it went well, obviously these guys. And what's interesting too, what you said, and I think sometimes we shy away from that. We end up getting someone who's at our level or blower. You went, woo, you went right up there yeah. and it worked. Well, I already, I, you know, Bill, and when I taught bold, I mean, I would, I would practice 30 hours before each session, the first several times that I taught it. So I learned early on from being a speech major in college, the only way to get your butterflies flying in alignment is to practice. And so I practice absolutely everything. If you ask my kids, what's the craziest thing about your mom? They're going to say, because she talks in the car to herself all the time. She's on her way to an appointment or whatever. Or she's getting ready to make a phone call and she says it out loud before she gets on the phone. You have to practice. And I think that's what keeps a lot of people from really killing it on the phones and in presentations. If you're not out there getting a lot of listings, it's because you're probably subconsciously, you don't know your listing presentation or consultation well enough to go after those leads because you don't want to put yourself in that uncomfortable place. Right. So building those and really learning those and understanding how to walk people through questions is so incredibly important. And, you know, I literally, and I told you this last week, you know, I started with my sphere. It's my favorite script in the world. Hey, I know it's been a long time. I just want to let you know, I'm building the most incredible vendor list ever. And I want to share it with you when I'm done. Who have you had in your house in the last six months to a year that has absolutely been fantastic that I can refer to anybody that I know? Guys, you should take notes on this one. That's an easy script to use. It's the best way to re-engage your sphere. Yeah. Because when I came in, I had to re-engage my sphere. It's been 10 years. I hadn't even marketed to him, Bill. You're, you know. you're, you're pulling, you're pulling uh, everything from all the old days and trying to get them back in. Now, when you look at it, if we saw a graph and how things were going, so your callings are six hours and you're calling your database, when did you just start seeing production? How long did it take to see production starting to go up? When I switched to expireds and FISBOS. Oh, there we go. There's the answer. Yeah. Yeah. So because if you're looking at Sphere, right, the Sphere is a long game. It's a long tail. I knew that in order for me to get into business right now, I had to go after the people that already had their hand up. And so the sphere would warm me up the first hour of the day. And then I would start going into different that. And my admin literally had my postcards because I did a lot of marketing. So if I talked to somebody, she was over there writing the postcard and we were dropping in the mail as we went. So we built some systems so that me just calling wasn't the only thing. It wasn't the only touch. Right. Would, was there any apprehension getting back into calling the physicals and expires for, yeah. for you? I mean, what would, because I mean, we got to share that because everything said, oh, well, she got it all down. You know, it was easy for her, but we all have that. Yeah. I wanted to throw up every day. Yeah. Except here's the deal. If you have no choice and you have no business, then just go do it. Because, you know, and I used to being a woman, okay, chicks on the call. Shh. Most of the people who are calling for sale by owners and expireds are men. So I had a clear advantage coming in with that much experience. And I mean, and I would, I would say scripts just to throw them off, right? Like I'd take them off their script because for sale by owners and expireds have their own scripts. No, I'm not interested. Okay. So what's your script back, right? So you have to be able to be a little bit fresh and take them off guard. And then they actually become real with you. And that's so what's let's just role play that one. This is gonna be good. So what, give me something that they would say back to you. Cause I, I could, you, you said something that's really cool. 
you're right. A lot of men are calling. So what you did, if I know you well enough, you did your little Shannon, you know, little uh, charm thing. You were, you were friendly. You weren't so um, salesy in your approach. So let, let, let's kind of role play that. So what, what would someone say to you that kind of was kind of the driver guy thing? What would they say? Well, first of all, if they say, you know, hello, and I'd say, hi, this is Shannon. And I had a lady once say, or she said, hi, this is Shannon. I said, oh my God, that's my name too. How weird is this? <laughs> she completely took her off. Completely yeah, took oh, her that's, that's perfect. She was a for sale by owner. Yeah. And I ended up listing their house, helping buy a house. and ended up being like a half million dollar deal. And it was only because I said, oh my gosh, that's weird. My name is Shannon too. So I think it's not, you can't necessarily say, here's my script in a box. You have to be able to respond to people like a human instead of a robot. I, I love you saying that. Actually, when you study uh, Robert Gialdini's Six Principles of Persuasion, that was one of them. They found that most people want to do business with people that have the same similar things going on. Name, name, perfect. You're Shannon, I'm Shannon. Hey, let's, let me list your house. That's yeah. perfect. And I, and, and I call that freestyling. So that's what you probably do really well is that you adapt to the conversation, right? Instead of well, staying on total script. Yeah, and adapting to the conversation and also being able to transition. So yeah. if you understand like language and how the psychology of sales works, as soon as somebody is going, no, 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 you have to take them from there to another place to get them to say yes. So I was on the phone with a, uh, I don't even remember what kind of lead it was the other day. And my teammate said, well, why don't you call? You call. I want to hear you call. I'm like, okay, I'll call. Well, first of all, his rate of speech was like at 10 words per minute instead of a hundred. Yeah. So literally I had to do this and look down at the floor so I could concentrate because it was so incredibly oh, slow. Hello. And and I said, you know, is it possible that you may be interested in selling soon? Okay, if you, when you say, is it possible, they're were, they were always going to say what? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what would keep you from selling today if you had an offer? And he said, well, you know what? My wife's pregnant and blah, 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 blah. So instead of me going down that path, it was a quick transition bill of, oh my gosh, congratulations. What a great life-changing event. Boom. When are you due? All of a sudden, his demeanor changed. Yeah, everything he flipped. Story. It was a 10-minute conversation, and we got the appointment. So I think it's about, I mean, you have to understand how questions work and persuasion, and you have to have the basics of the scripts. And, and I always used to tell my clients, you have to have them in your bones, right? Mm. So that any time, it's an automatic reflex that you can piece together different scripts depending on the situation. Beautiful. Yeah. I think that's so important. So now that you, you got that down, you're yeah. mailing, doing some marketing and yeah. uh, I want to get to how you worked your day. Cause that's something that everybody likes to know about. How did Shannon work her day? And guys, let me just say, if you have any questions, chat in also welcome Marika, who's, this is her first time here. Thanks for being on. And uh, so um, if you have questions, please do. Where can we find the scripts to get them in our bones? <laughs> this is from Ellie. Uh, you know, it really depends on what company you're with, what training you've been to. I would tell you that I've seen scripts from all different sources and you really have to find what style works with you. So, I mean, obviously being an old bold coach, I had the bold scripts in my bones because people would love to throw objections at me all the time to see if I could handle them. And yet none of them are really super my style. So then it became, I think if you're more conversational, and instead of being a presenter, you're in a conversation, not a versation. Everything yeah. changes. Yeah, I think that's very true. So uh, great question. Thanks, Ellie. What about um, your day? Break up. Tell us how you work your day now. What do you work on? How does your day get broken down? First of all, I, I usually walk at 630 in the morning because I'm getting my old bones moving. And then... We, I have, I have gone all over the board, right? So I've gone paper planner, I've gone electric, electronic CRM, I've gone to my task list here, here's this here, here's this here. Literally, we finally got to a point, we read a crazy awesome book called The 12 Week Year, and we built our own little planner. And I will tell you, this is the box that makes the magic happen, which is 10 conversations, that's not a versation, by the way. That's not a text. That's not an IM. That's not a PM. That's not a 
blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Three handwritten notes, five Facebook comments. Now, this is about not being interesting. It's about being interested. So it's you. And by the way, you can go build lists on your Facebook so that you have a sphere list so that they're running on top of your, you know, your wall as soon as you pull it up and go right. be interested in at least five people a day. Right. Perfect. And then are you recording those calls somewhere? Are you recording them on a, a CRM so that you remember and cause to do's and cause actions? That's the most important thing that gets done every day. And so then of course, what we're who are you calling in the conversations? So it depends on who, like what my strategies are for the week. So, you know, you and I've talked a little bit about sphere strategies and that is, you know, 75% of my business is from sphere past clients, people that I know, or somebody off of that. Right. So, and you go, well, that's not, that's not a lot of people. However, that's given us 75 deals so far this year. So it, it's working. And, and so depending on where we're at in our rhythm of the year, it will cause different conversations. So for instance, each day we are to call at least five sphere. And it depends on if we're promoting an event, if we're promoting a review drawing, or if we just have something really intelligent to say, like, please go pull out your freaking mortgage statement and look at it and go save yourself some money or get out of PMI or get to a 15 year loan or whatever, right? Like they really appreciate you teaching them about the market. So those are some calls. We always have lead follow-up. Lead follow-up is the most important thing that goes on that list every single day. If you're losing leads because you're not following up, you should fire yourself. Which is, it's a shame that people mess up lead follow-up so much. It's the most important thing you can do. Yeah, I can see that happening a lot. Look for new business, depending on, you know, what my ongoing strategy is at that time. Am I, am I building my legs and my plans and FISBOs? Am I building my legs and my plans and expireds? Am I going after some farming? Am I going after, you know, we, we saw houses so fast right now. We're circle prospecting and you can circle prospect by mail you can circle prospect not really by door knocking right now you can circle prospect by the phone so yeah. it really depends on what where my business is at that time and what all i have going so do you if you rate yourself as far as a scheduled out person 10 you're like impeccable in, in your schedule one you're just you suck you're terrible where do you how would you rate yourself about a seven seven okay good. and that's kind of i mean you could do a good business on seven you don't have to be perfect you know, I used to tell people that I coached, Bill, if you would just show me your calendar, I can predict how much money you'll make a year. Yeah, that's true. That is really so, true. If it's running from you. So now you, you, you've got this thing scheduled out, you hired your assistant. How do you start leveraging through this whole process? Because I know you like leverage. I do. I love leverage. A lot of it's technology, a lot of it's tools, and then people. And you know, when, when you first start, the worst thing you can ever do is go partner with another agent or hire another agent, because if their disc is the same as yours, you're going to be a train wreck really, really fast. Why? Don't, why? why? why do you say that? Yeah. Because they're not going to do their paperwork either. They're not going to do their follow-up either. And you have to have somebody behind you cleaning up your tornado. If you are a high I and or a high D or both, you better have somebody cleaning up your tornado behind you. And those of you who are on the call right now who have high analytical, you're thinking, or you're the glue of the team, you're thinking, oh my God, those people are the ones that drive me crazy. Go find one of those because I will tell you, when you partner like that, it, it can be magic. So in a perfect world, I mean, I had, to have the, I had to have my admin be my first hire to keep me organized and to make me do my job. Yeah. Which is, that's uh, your Stacy, right? Was that Stacy? Yeah. No, 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 my Erica, my Erica is my director of operations. Jeez. She will take out a whip if I don't do my job. Remember the story about there's a couple of agents that we know that actually had their assistant lock them in to their offices and not come out till they finish lead generating or whatever they had to do. Is that that's me? That's you, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it has to be done because you know, or else. It's so critical right now. Listen, and I want to talk a little bit about how you went through this COVID thing with your team, because I mean, that's reality right now. You had this business going and all of a sudden this has happened. How did you get through all this? Through COVID? Yep. Well, we decided to lean in versus pivoting to the sofa. 
So that's the first differentiation I think is really important because I've seen agents, you know, and, and I don't care what political affiliation you are. I don't care what your beliefs are. You either chose to go to the sofa or you chose to lean in. We still had people that had to sell. We still had people that were moving in and relocating. We still had people coming out of leases. We just got safe and we got safe really fast. We were one of the earliest adopters of gloves and masks and everything, right? And I will tell you when we went on lockdown as a state of Kansas, which we were one of the really early states to go on complete lockdown, when the governor announced it, I went to my team and I said, okay, we're going to do the craziest thing. And I know you guys are going to hate me and you're going to have to just live with it because this is what we're going to do. So, and I shared with you, Bill, I have a closed Facebook group for mm -hmm. my sphere and my coach and I thought about it for six months and I finally did it a couple years ago, maybe a year ago, year and a half ago. And basically it's nothing about real estate. It is a closed group that is functional around selling stuff or discounts or our events. We post all of our pictures on there from every event. Mm -hmm. We post our drawings, we post, we have all kinds of stuff. So we decided to do 30 days of fun during lockdown on our closed group. Good. And it got really hilarious. So for instance, who has the craziest PJ picture of a family to whose kid can draw the wildest window art with an expo marker. Uh, on a Friday night, I said, who can send us a video of the fastest person chugging a beer? Well, what happened during those 30 days, because we went out through our bomb bomb videos and engaged them into clicking the button, join the closed group if you weren't in there. And we gave away $5 gift cards to Starbucks. This whole thing ended up costing me right around $500. We got 15 sphere referrals by not asking for one referral in 30 days. By not asking for one referral, you got 15 referrals. We cared about them, we called them, we checked in on them, how are you doing? We're gonna have fun, come along with us on this fun journey. We're gonna give you something to concentrate on besides everything that's horrible going on in the world. Beautiful. How, well, how big is your audience now inside of that closed Facebook page? How many right around 400. That's actually good. Yeah. So really? a lot of people don't have Facebook or, you know, sometimes we have both husband and wife on most of the time, just one of them. Right. And, and that's a constant push to keep growing that because that's our way to communicate directly to our sphere. That's free. That's easy. It. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a combination of many things because what you're saying here, you did the six hours. When did you stop the six hours? Probably about two months in because I finally started converting. And by the way, I practiced my presentation like a crazy woman before I'd go out to every single one. And I had a coach, by the way. Like, I will never forget going out to this for sale by owner who called me off of a postcard because he would never pick up his darn phone. And I was on my way and my coach was like, take a sign, take a lockbox. By golly, you're gonna take this listing today and do not stop it. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this, right? I'm going to go out to this for sale by owner. It was a 425. And in our market, that's a pretty good size sale. And I remember going, okay, well, let's make a decision. Are you ready to get started? And the husband and wife looked at me and they were like, well, we need to talk. And I said, I'll go outside. I'm going to go get my sign. Yeah. And I came back in and I'm like, how about we start staging now? And, and the lady was like, okay, let's do that. So I put my hair up in a bun and off we went and Texted that to my coach and said, all right, thank you. I needed that little push. I probably wouldn't have pushed him that hard. We sold it in a week, full price. They'd been on the market for six or six weeks. And now she's my hairdresser. So. And the story continues. And, and then the you get more of it because they, they're in front of a lot of people. But it's, it's interesting how um, fear stops us for sure. What, what I'm hearing from you is that, you know, you had to get, there was fear, but you kind of pushed on. We didn't let it stop you. And then uh, you actually devoted a whole lot of time to training yourself, yes. got the role play partner, got a coach. And so where do you see now your business is actually growing? Um, you know, the other thing I want to ask you about texting, do you guys text to people that are, you know, let's say Fizbo's expires. Have you done any texting? How's that working for you? So we do it through our CRM because we can text through our CRM. So like I built a whole action plan on text. 
So mm. I combine it, by the way, with a bomb bomb email that has me show up on their text as my face as an auto text that I can start through an auto plan. So like today, my virtual assistant is actually launching 300 new expired through my text plan through my CRM. Okay. <laughs> While she's sitting here talking to us, she's getting yeah. it. Oh, I, I, he keeps adding people to my CRM. I can, yeah, he's added like, I don't know, 200 today that we're starting on that plan. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, the videos, what do you got to be careful about when you're doing videos and doing what you just did say? I mean, what, cause I see a lot of people want to do it. I'm not sure if everybody knows how to be effective with it. What do you do to be effective or how do you do what you do so that you do get the response that you want? Keep it under a minute. Look very professional. I understand that a lot of people like to be real in this world. And I will tell you, depending on your audience, that's probably not a very good choice because these videos are out there and they'll come back to haunt you. Yeah, so so what, do you mean real? what do you mean real? Like, uh, well, I mean, I've seen some agents go out like as a chick, right? I'm talking from a female perspective, no makeup, hair in a hat, doing this, you know, big video on a $600,000 house behind them because they want to be real. Well, you just turned off 90% of the audience that's going to buy that house. Yeah. So I would just tell you to be smart when you do video and practice it. So we do a lot of video and we, we build them in our bomb bomb emails, like I said, and then you can text the email. You just text the URL and it pops up the email on their phone. They see your little video. Well, th the key thing about that is that you are professional to any person at any age, any time. Mm. Ladies, you better have stuff buttoned up. You better have your makeup on. I mean, you just need to look professional. Gentlemen, same thing. No makeup. Just look, look nice. Can't look like an Ant or anybody like that. Uh, so, yeah. um, but I'm glad you said that because I think it's it's gotten a little bit out of hand. I think a little bit or a lot out of hand in this whole situation. I mean, we, some of us are avoiding doing what we're supposed to do, so we'll do this. I mean, you didn't avoid Fizbo's expired. I mean, you're still doing it. You're doing it in a different way, uh, and you you you've done all these other things. The only thing that we didn't talk about too, I just wanted to ask you, because I don't think I ever asked you this, is I know listings are selling quickly, but have you done ever an, uh, an open house campaign? Did you do that along with everything else going on? We do it all. You do it all. We do it all. So let me go back because I think this is important to tell the story. In 2016, I relaunched. I did 51 deals myself with an admin. Mm -hmm. In 2017, that was 14 million in my market. In right. 2017, I played with building a team. I did not go through the hiring process. I made every mistake that I've always told people not to make. And we ended up doing uh, right at 23.9 million. That was the second year. Last third year, 2018, I switched to it and back to myself when I did 19 million myself with an admin. And then last year, I killed it by hiring two awesome agents and I've had my director of operations with me now for two and a half years, which is an absolute freaking rock star, 24 year old social media whiz, marketing transaction coordinator. She does it all. Last year we did 29.1 million and we broke hundred. We did 117 deals. Here's what's interesting, Bill. This year we are closed and pended in COVID at 30 million 500 and we're at our hundredth deal that will happen today or tomorrow. Isn't that great? So congratulations. That's awesome. Well, a lot of it's systems and a lot of it is practicing and making sure that our conversions are really high. So I see a lot of people wasting so much time and I don't understand why they're malpracticing on their clients. Instead, they, they go out and they're nervous and then they show up. I mean, just be real. I mean, we're, I'm doing more zooms than I've ever done in my life. All my buyer consults are now on zoom. Half my listing consults are on zoom. Because I can have, I can have my whole consultation there, walk a buyer through it, start the search, I'll show them MLS. It is more concise in 45 minutes than driving, running appointments, chit chatting. I mean, it's changed our whole business. So we're just doing so much more in less time. So and we're Christine, goes, Christine goes, wow, wow, wow. You go girl. You go girl. <laughs> so, so hey, we're we're going to break 40 easy. 45 is two trips, 40 is one trip. So, the, and by the way, I have two other agents on my team that sell with me. 
One has not even hit his second year. And Bill, he has sold 19 houses in the last eight and a half weeks. Isn't that great? And he'll hit year two in November. All right, so. English is not his first language either. either. Well, I'm sure that everybody who's listening is, is probably salivating right now and going, I want that. Okay, so let's take, let's break down points that you could help someone to get to where you, you know, things that you've learned, things that you know, this works, so that we can give them a little list of points. What, what are some of the points that you want to make sure you do to get to a good volume and build this team up? The first thing I would tell you is that I, I think it's important to look at any business as building blocks. So your first building block is relaunching your sphere and mm -hmm. having a system. And here's our system. We do four events a year. We do four review contests a year. And then we do four really powerful, informational, critical, financial information things a year. Mm -hmm. So if you looked at that over time, right, we break everything down into 12 weeks. So every 12 weeks, we run a review contest for four weeks. Then we run an event for four weeks. And then we do a financial tip for four weeks. And it gives us something to talk about. We run it through our closed groups. We run it through our bomb bomb. And, you know, this is a way for us to build reviews, which we get business off of reviews like crazy. Uh, Google, Zillow, um, obviously Google business, by the way, is super important. I just closed a 650, the no referral fee that came off of Google. Oh. And so I think it's building blocks. So the first thing is sphere. The second thing is start building your system and be consistent. Mm -hmm. My clients now look for that pie party the Tuesday before every Thanksgiving because we've done it for four years in a row. They look for our Cutco knife sharpening party every August because we've done it four years in a row. So now they're asking us, hey, when are we going to do this? When's, what's the movie this March? So we do a movie in March. We do Cinco de Mayo in May. We do a Cutco sharpening party because those are my housewarming gifts. And then we do a pie party, which is our huge gratitude of the year, two days before Thanksgiving. And what you're doing is getting engagement. Right? You're building the community of people that are your fan club, and then you're, you're engaging them, which is really cool, which in turn, they go, I just love this, and they give you referrals, and let you, they're, they're all your little minions out there uh, letting people know about you. And I think we miss that. I mean, along with everything else that we have to do, it's not like you just did that. You yeah. have systems in place, and you're not even doing – it's not like Shannon's doing all this herself. You've got your team doing it, which is even nicer. Right? You, you're not always doing it. So you have your, your building blocks or center of influence, your sphere, you do events. Those are consistently being done. What else? Uh, so we do four events. We do four review contests because if you can build reviews and you, you keep building reviews consistently. So for instance, if you've already given me a review bill, you're automatically in our drawing every three months. We give away $300 gift cards every three months, just like clockwork. Because and I gave a review? Because I gave a review, you give you threw my name in a hat. Every three months. Got it. And we do it live on our closed Facebook group. We drive everything through that. We just keep going back to that closed Facebook group. So it gets really fun. And what happens is, is like at events, we hire a professional photographer. We put all of our pictures on that closed group. So if whatever we're giving away at that event, like a pie, we do a sticker that says, go to Shannon Group and Deal, sign up. That's where you're going to access your pictures. So we just keep putting everything back in that group. That's great. And you built your fan club. We built and a fan club. You've been doing that for four years, right? Yep. So I only had the closed group for a year and a half because I fought my coach for too long. You should listen to your coach, Shannon. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, come on, that's ridiculous. You, you guys all just got this idea for free. I had to pay $1,000 six times to get that. Yeah, yeah. And she's stubborn. It took her six months to figure that one out. All right, okay, so here's the question. How do you invite people to the group? Are they previous customers? So they're either previous customers or they could be people that I, is in my lead database who I've had communication with. We put them automatically in the sphere to pull them in or past just friends, neighbors, you know, my kids, moms, friends, whatever. So that's, that's the sphere. And basically how we've invited them is we do these goofy bomb bomb videos. They're like, hey, guess what we're doing now? You gotta click this button to join our fun. And we just keep like, so we give them a bomb bomb video at least four times a year to draw people into that group. When we're talking to them during the consult, we tell them up front, just so you know, we've built a community and we've built a community where 
uh, we have people in there that have their own businesses and they advertise to each other. It is, you'll get to know people, you'll network through this group. And so it really becomes an advantageous thing. Then they'll see each other's comments and then they'll see each other at an event. They're like, hey, you're the lady that did the PJ contest and it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, so we, yeah. We're building a community and we are their one house, one, one stop shop for housing needs. I get phone calls every day from my sphere. Well, how do I get that paint discount? Hey, who's the next plumber? Hey, who's, what's the hottest paint color you've seen in houses, Shannon, whatever. And so we drive a lot of stuff through Bomb Bomb, and just because they get to see us, then you have 100% communication. How big is your so, community? Like what's, your, what's the population? In Kansas City? Yeah. Two million. Okay, so th this, <laughs> it could be done in any market what you just did. So it's not for a small market, it's for any market. Oh, yeah. and, and, and you gotta understand, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you have most companies are doing that to us. Starbucks does that to us. They're all bringing you in on their little, you know, your phone to be able to charge. They have these little contests going on. So you're getting engagement, you're pulling your own audience in. What's yeah. interesting too is that when they're in the face, closed Facebook page, um, uh, you actually get more information out because if it's on the public one, they start to limit what's going on. So you actually have a better uh, audience that's actually hearing a lot of what you have to say on there. And the other thing I want to make a point that you're just not doing fun stuff. You're giving information out. So you become the Oracle of real estate information. So you're seen as the pro, the fun lady, the, uh, the expert, the influencer in real estate. And that is so important. That Anything with your house. I want them to call me first. Yeah. Should I remodel my kitchen? Let me do a CMA for you to make sure that that's a good decision. We tell them that up front. The other thing I wanted to mention, Bill, let's see if I remember what it was. It was really good too. It might've just left my head. I'm chasing, I might be chasing Sometimes. Sometimes. any object right now, Bill. <laughs> okay, that's okay. I'll fill oh, it. I know what I was gonna say. This is really important. How many times do, do people work sphere and they do pop buys? Uh -huh. mm. I don't if know. you're doing pop buys, I would love for you to consider doing a reverse pop buy, which is having an event. So an I pop? Yeah, yeah, a reverse pop, right? Because okay. I can get 150 people to come see me in a four hour time period versus me going seeing 150 people in 150 hours. That's probably why I never liked the Popeye concept because it was not. Uh, the use of your time prior, it, it was just a mess when it came to time management. So I like that, that you're actually having them come to you. Yeah, well, it's a reverse Popeye. Yeah. I do Popeyes, I just don't go to them, they come to me. I love that. And I get so them sponsored. So, so it doesn't cost me what is the event for that? What do you do for the event for that? No, that's a movie in March. The movie in March, okay, so those are, the, got it. Those, are, those are our, a pop buy. A pop buy, this is one of the questions, is that you go in and pop into some of your sphere and maybe leave them like a small gift or something like that. So yeah, we just have pop, people come to parties. This is a pot pie. No, it's a pop like P-O-P, buy like go buy something or go, not buy purchase, but go buy the house type of deal. Yeah. And, and we, another question, we do have a Facebook page. We have a business page mm -hmm. and you can go and it's the Shannon group, S-H-A-N-A-N, and you can watch a lot of our marketing and what uh, our admin is doing. We've got a lot of cool stuff going on there. What about a YouTube channel? I don't have that yet. I do all my videos in Bomb Bomb right now. That's coming, Bill. I just... You don't have time. You're busy. Some of the, the building block's not there yet. Yeah. But you, you, listen, uh, it ain't too shabby at uh, 40 million that you're doing anyway. So things are working. So this whole thing, this whole system, uh, you by yourself, admin, team, two agents, took you one, two, three, four, five years. Five years to break 40. And we're a small team. We were ranked number 10 last year in all the small teams in the state of Kansas with 117 deals. And this is with a couple of mistakes on the way. Oh. Right? Last year was a train wreck. We only closed 3.8 million the first quarter. It was a total train wreck. And then I got my head straightened around and we put our heads down and then we ended up pending 46 deals in 12 weeks and took 30 listings because we actually changed our focus and started using a planner and 
the coach stuff. my team once a week and accountability leads, you know. Some runs are the stuff you used to actually teach that yeah. you, that you <laughs> didn't weird. do. <laughs> that you didn't do. So um, I was going to, uh, what is it? Okay, we went, we said that. So um, what are the mistakes that we want to make sure that they never make, that you've made so they could avoid it? Don't start too many building blocks at the same time. Ah, good one. One at a time. So if you look at your sphere and you say, okay, how am I going to do this? The first thing you got to do is go get all the information because if you just have a phone book of people, it's a phone book. It is not a sphere. You've got to, you've got to build anniversary dates and birthdays and have real information. So that's the first building block. Then you may say, I'm going to go launch a closed group. And then you go and launch the closed group and get a lot of those people in. Then I'm going to start doing events. Then I'm going to, and then you just keep layering on. Do not start all of that at one time. Interesting. You know, there and you I can see this Facebook group be interesting to, you, you've got the Fizbos and expires because you still have Fizbo and expired business. So they're getting attracted to you earlier on. They either heard about you. So closing them will probably be a little bit easier, let's just say, than, than calling them cold because you kind of warmed them up. Well, if, if I can send an email to their, and in there, I have links to our story, our articles about us, our reviews. We put all the buttons on there. They get to go do all the research on their phone with a touch button that's all automated. Mm. Why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. Well, you've got uh, inbound, outbound, right? So the outbound is the call, and you've got a very successful inbound system coming with, uh, and, and, and let's, because I, I was just, I could see people wanting to just be Shannon tomorrow. So yeah, it's uh, taken me 22 years. So she's a 22 year overnight sensation. Uh, so you don't want to let go of the bread and butter and think you can just jump into doing you because you could lose a whole lot, right? So the bread and butter still is going to be, Hey, she called the Fizbo. She called the expired. She got listings. Um, your inventory, I don't know if it's fluctuating. So how's that go? How big is your inventory typically running? Well, right now, Kansas City as a whole is down 45% this year over last year. This year, last year, we ended up taking right at 96 listings for the year. This year, we're right at 58. So out of 58 listings, we are at 99 pended and closed for the year. And I cannot keep a house in inventory. So we've changed a lot of our strategy there of, you know, we do a lot of coming soons. We do a lot of pre-listing. We do a ton of advertising. We then link it to our website that we can do with our pre-listing. And then we, we make it really sticky and then they come into our system. And then all of a sudden the auto plan launches because it's the only way we're gonna get business right now before the listing goes on, not after the listing comes live. Mm, good point. So we, we literally have, we don't have any active. I have four in pre-list right now. So we do all of our business on pre-list because once it goes live, it's done. Like in how fast? Like a, a day? It's all day. Multiple offers in a day. I mean, I even had multiple offers on my 650 that had an indoor pool that I had to paint the whole inside because it was lime green and orange. And I still got multiple offers on it in two days. Wow. It's crazy. So you have to be really smart. Because used to, you know, you'd say, well, I got to pick up one buyer for every listing or two buyers for every listing. You have to change your strategy now and go pre-marketing and, and maybe do like, you know, circle prospecting before it comes on the market. Mm. Circle prospecting for that open house. You've got to do a lot of open house advertisement. So guys, that means that in Espresso, the neighborhood search that we just have that, that we just put into place would be ideal for that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and be more, I think we got to be more assertive in that area too, because the things are just flying off the shelf, right? Oh yeah. So get out there. Um, I want to ask you a question that I didn't ask you before. And uh -oh. I think it's important. This is a big one. Ready? Okay. You, ready. Let me get take a drink your, of water. Yeah. All your personal stuff that's gone on. How do you keep your mind set? <laughs> and I've known you for years. So I know that you're always pretty much there, but listen, life can kick you in the pants. Mm -hmm. And so how do you keep yourself focused and your mindset where you want it to continue to keep this business up and going, running the way you like it? 
That's a really hard question for me. And part of it was because probably how I was raised, which is I literally have never had a limit or a lid on me. And, you know, I'm, I'm a middle sister of three girls and that's just how my parents always raised us, right? Like we raised, raised in a very blue collar, very conservative family and you can go do whatever you want and no one will ever tell you no. And so I, I really, it's a more about keeping myself in Zen and in balance to help my brain go awesome all day long. So it's not necessarily like, what am I feeding my brain? It's about how I'm managing my body and my health so that I'm strong throughout the day. How do you do that? Well, I walk a lot. Guys drinking a, taking a shot of tequila every hour. No, I'm, I'm drinking my water. I'm water. not drinking my water. Part of it is, you know, we start every morning at 8.30 as a team. What did you do good? What do you have doing great today? What's going on? How can we help you? Who needs help writing offers? Blah, 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 right? Like that's how we start every single morning like that. And that's just something that I've learned a long time ago from our coaching that we used to do together, Bill, is you have to start with a bang every morning. If you don't have a time to start, you won't. Hmm. Yep. So that consistency is absolutely the most critical thing, no matter what I had the night before, how many kid events, what was going on in my world, doesn't matter. We started at 8.30 that morning. Every morning. On Zoom. Everybody's on Zoom? Usually. Right now, I mean, we're back in the office. Our director of operations is at home because she's got some stuff going on with uh, health. And so she Zooms with us. And then I Zoom with my virtual assistant at least two or three times a week on projects that I have him building on the backside of different systems. Got it. Got it. So it's uh, the Zen. Oh yeah. Health. My right? word of the year, Zen. I saw you do Zen the other day on your Facebook page. I'm going, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> paddleboarding. I was yeah. paddleboarding, Bill. You do that. Yeah, I love paddleboarding. So she's in her zen. So, but you do have time for yourself. This is not, you're working like crazy uh, all day long. You do have time for yourself building yeah. something like this. I mean, I've been a single parent 24 seven for a very long time. And, you know, so none, none of that gets to be an excuse, right? It, it's about incorporating it and pulling it in and enrolling people and having family goals and everything else. I mean, if you interviewed my children, they would tell you that some of the lessons that they learned through having me as a high driving mom is that I never missed a goal. Or if I did, I was always striving right at that goal. And we talk about it as a family and we go, okay, if mom, get, if mom can go do this, then guess what? We get this. Right. We go get Saturday afternoon together as a picnic with no phones. We go get a trip. We go get whatever. And so, you know, we, we've done the same thing with our team. We have a reward system and you and I haven't talked about this either. And that is every 15 closed deals, we do an event together and it's every other plus one, just us, plus one, just us. For instance, we've done ax throwing. We've done top golf. We've done hibachi. I just did a dinner at my house because it's COVID. And we played um, Cards Against Humanity, which was really fun, right? So, I mean, engaging that team is so important for me as the leader because if I can keep their engine moving, it's a lot easier for me to keep ahead of them. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Paula had a question. How? Read that. It says, where did you find your incredible assistant? And now she's your director, Robs. Do I understand that correctly? Yes. So the first admin that I hired is not the one that came the long way. She only made it for two years because I went past her ceiling of achievement. Ah. Erica was 22 when I hired her. She was actually at a front desk position that she kept bumping her head with ownership going, I want more, I want more, I want more. And she got permission to interview with teams. She actually approached me. I was her last team because apparently she was scared of me. And so she came to me through my other admin. And, you know, I will tell you, I look at her as a partner and she is my gut person. She's got, she's a CS on the disc. She mm -hmm. has very little I, very little D. So she's the exact opposite of me. And I like, I like an admin leading with a C because I need them to be more task oriented than feeling oriented because I have none. You saw my desk, Bill, it's yeah. ugly. Yeah. And so- He has no feelings. I have none. So 
we literally, we build system and then system and then system and then system. And now what's cool about her is I have her tied to transactions. That's her bonus. And half of her, over half of her income will come from transaction bonuses. So she's very interested in our events, knocking it out of the park. She runs all the events. She runs all the review contests. She writes all the bomb bomb emails. We just drop in the videos. She actually sends them all for us. So she does our marketing, our transaction coordinating, and our social, which is absolutely one. phenomenal. And if you have somebody with a very wide bandwidth, I mean, and, and I know the next question is going to be how much do you pay her? I pay her, a, I start her with a base of 36 plus 100 per closed transaction, an extra 150 for listings. So you can do the math. And this year she'll do probably maybe 80,000 total between the two. That's, that's and it's good. a it's a phenomenal position for her. She's 24 and she loves what she does and she doesn't have to take calls nights and weekends. Can I send my daughter over there? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, I mean, it's, a, it's a great position and, and I love her. I mean, and we, she has my back and you've got to have somebody in that position that says, gosh, you know what? Our business is dropping. We've got to do something crazy with our sphere. So let's go do this. And then she comes up with all these ideas. Well, you know, my assistant that I have, was a waitress at a restaurant that I saw many, many times, ends up being a psychology major who mm -hmm. understood. So when I started giving discs out and showing discs with people that I'm working with, um, she got it. And she's, you know, Caitlin, you, she's, that's, you know, you, you find these, this talent, you got to, they're not going to always be obvious. You've got yeah. to uh, go after these people. So Shannon, you know, we always have a good time talking to each other. Um, always. Tell me, what resources can people have to just to to learn a little bit more? I mean, you've read some books, you you know, you've coached, you've spoke to many, many people all over the country. Uh, what resources would you say would be good for someone who wants to get to your level of production? Boy. Besides, uh, coaching and everything else that you do. First of all, know that it doesn't come overnight. Mm. Don't have the expectation that you're going to be at my level in one year if this is your first year in the business. It's taken me 22 years to get here. And I think that's really important because I would have bold students come up to me all the time, Bill, and go, I just want, I just want to take your, your scripts and I want to implant them into my head. And I said, great, it's only going to take 20 years to do that. And they're like, ah, damn, I didn't realize it was that much work. Well, when... You, you have to practice. So that's the most important thing, right? We spend a lot of time on role playing listing presentations and buyer presentations. I go through my listing presentation every time on my way to go to a listing. Hmm. I don't listen to the radio. I don't talk to people. I practice. So I think it's about, you know, understanding that it's okay to practice. It's okay to role play. Go get, go get three role play partners right now. Like, I'm sure you're in this great community in Espresso. Go find three people to help you because you will help each other at such a high level. I so mean, funny, I still... we, we just started doing this with uh, the Monday morning launches that we're doing now on Mondays at uh, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time with me. Uh, we, uh, Melissa and I came up with the idea of really starting to do this, at least accountability partners or whatever. Yep. I don't think people miss that. And I think they're so afraid that they're going to get discovered. Everybody probably doesn't do well. So you're in a good group of people that want to learn, but don't be afraid. I mean, that's the, that's that next step. Um, you know, don't be afraid to practice because like I just did a presentation last year uh, about some of my coaching to 13 CEOs. You talk about a little nerve wracking in a room, you go into 13 CEOs and I only need one of them. Right. I probably practice for 20 hours for a 45 minute presentation. And I know you're thinking, no way that's not possible. It really is. Yes. You, my kids could tell you all the bold stories because they've heard me practice so many times in my bathroom in front of my mirror. They could tell the fly story just like that. <laughs> you know, it's hilarious. And so it's, a, it's about building blocks. And if you looked at your business and you said one thing at a time, uh, the first thing I would tell you to do is go read the book, The 12 Week Year. Get off of an annual plan. Understand that, you know, if you look at an annual plan, most people are like, yeah, well, I'll catch up next quarter or I'll do whatever. That's the book that I read last year when we were at 3.8 million after the first quarter. 
which we ended up closing 29.1. How did we do that? We started running everything on a 12 week year. Right. High, comp high compression of time, very focused tasks, only a few ongoing strategies at a time. So that's why you say, what are you working on? Well, it depends on what my 12 week year is at the time and where I'm at in the weeks. Right, I love that. Because my lead gen is gonna change. And then it's about building the systems. And you and I have talked a lot about bomb bomb and you know, I'm a, I'm a, we have a bomb bomb coaching gig and it's really, it's a, it's a system that I can go touch a lot of people and they can see me. I don't have to do it. Right. Build your systems. I mean, I'm sure many of you have, I mean, you have a dialer for God's sake, use it. Thank you. I mean, what, that. what, what tools are you not using that you have? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have circle prospecting built in. Call them before the house comes on the market. I have a house coming up. Do you know anybody who wants to move in the neighborhood? And be real. Don't be weird and be fake. Like, I hate the script. Don't ever say this. Who do you know that's going to buy or sell real estate in the next 60 days? Hold on a second. Hold on. Just, thank you. Because that, 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 that's one. <laughs> Here's my script. Ready? Write this down. Who do you know that's fun? Because I don't work with non-fun people. Only send me fun people. If they're not fun, please don't refer me. Well, let me tell you something. We had fun today. Now she's taking a shot of that vodka again. Anyway, um, get on your dialer for God's sake. It is. It is. It is. Um, unfortunately, the level of understanding what you have to do to get to higher levels of production. People tend to think it's easy. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of focus. Uh, here at Espresso, we have the tools to help them to get to that level, to keep that outbound going, and then they can start to add other things to it. We understand that. So it, it is important. You did a great job today. I really appreciate you being here as a friend and, and just uh, with your talent and experience has been great. How can people get a hold of you for questions? You can private message me on Facebook. And... Type that in. Uh, I'm on private for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, I could type it in if you want. Shannon Steer. You can private message me on Facebook. You can, you can email me. There's my email. And, you know, just don't be afraid to reach out to me. Uh, if you actually friend me, cause I have like at 4,700 friends private message me so I know because then I'll kick some people out. I'd rather, you know, I have a community of agents on my Facebook because I was a trainer and a coach for so long. So it's really fun to interact with other agents and top agents. And I love following pages and seeing what everybody else is doing. I am the absolute master of rip off and repeat. So you guys go rip off and repeat everything that we've taught you today because, you know, it, and rip off and repeat all the scripts yeah. that you're getting already. And it works. It works if you use it. If you don't use it, it actually doesn't work. And get over your fear. And it seems like that you did and it works. So I'm excited. Thank you for being on today. It was awesome. Absolutely. It was awesome. I appreciate it. And guys, get a hold of her. Get on Facebook. Don't yeah. forget Mondays with uh, Money Moon Launch with me. Shannon, we'll, we'll talk soon. Bye, y'all.